This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on Insurance. I'm an attorney who's retired from the practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant and expert witness and author and producer of these videos. The key to insurance is the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. It's unwritten, but it is the basis of all insurance that neither party will do anything to deprive the other of the benefits of the policy. On occasion, insureds act without good faith. They're unethical in their dealings with their insurer. When an insured acts unethically in his or her relations with an insurer, if discovered by the insurer or its claims person, the right to indemnity under a policy may be lost. Although hoary with age, the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Claflin and Others v. Commonwealth Insurance Company, an 1883 decision, resulted after a man named Murphy, acting as the insured, lied at an examination under oath because he was concerned others might learn of information that could hurt him with regard to his relationship to his employer and the lender. The lie was a breach of Murphy's ethical obligation to the insurer, and as a result, because they discovered the lie, he was deprived of indemnity, because what he did was considered by the U.S. Supreme Court to be fraud. The U.S. Supreme Court dealt with another case of failure of ethical standards in the case called Stipsich v. Metropolitan Life Insurance Company, a 1927 decision. In that case, the Supreme Court was faced with a failure on the part of the insured to communicate a material change in his health condition saw a possible breach by the insured of the covenant of good faith and fair dealing, but left to the trial court to determine the truthfulness of the answers. The Stipsich case did explain, however, that the ancient rule, the changes in conditions material to the risk which occur between the opening of negotiations for insurance and the issuance of a policy, must be divulged and became first established in early British marine insurance policies and is still the law that is followed today in most jurisdictions. An ethical insured who applies for fire insurance, for example, on a dwelling that burns to the ground between the time of the application and the inception of the policy as required by the Stipsitch decision, must advise the insurer of the change and allow it the opportunity to renegotiate its obligations since the contingent event it was asked to insure was no longer contingent but was a certainty. An insured that honestly promises its insurer that a burglar alarm exists protecting the property that is the subject of the insurance and obtains a reduced premium because of the alarm's protection of the property is a promise that must be kept. However, if the alarm is disconnected between the time the application was signed and the policy issued, the insured is obligated under Stipsitch to advise the insurer of the change and allow it the right to renegotiate the terms of the insurance contract. After spending over 54 years as a claims person and insurance coverage lawyer, 
I found that a high percentage of people insured, well over 95%, act ethically, fairly, and in good faith in the effort to obtain insurance or make a claim against their insurer. The small percentage that do not have an ethical compass and intentionally misrepresent or conceal material facts or act with total disregard for ethical conduct or intentionally misrepresent or conceal material facts to obtain insurance are fraud perpetrators who give up the right to the benefits of the policy. It is best when dealing with a potential insured who has acted unethically to understand what ethics are and what are ethical behavior. Ethics refers to well-founded standards of right and wrong that prescribe what humans ought to do, usually in terms of rights, obligations, benefits to society, fairness, or specific virtues. Ethics, for example, refers to those standards that impose the reasonable obligations to refrain from murder, rape, theft, assault, slander, and fraud. Ethical standards also include those that imply virtues of honesty, compassion, and loyalty. Ethical standards include standards relating to rights such as the right to life, the right to freedom from injury, and the right to privacy. Such standards are adequate standards of ethics because they are supported by consistent and well-founded reasons. Ethics also refers to the study and development of one's standards of conduct. Feelings, laws, and social norms can deviate from what is ethical. It is necessary, especially to people involved in the business of insurance, to constantly examine one's standards to ensure that they are reasonable and well-founded conduct that ethically treats an insured with the utmost good faith. Ethics also requires the insured to treat its or his or her insurer with the utmost of good faith. Ethics requires the continuous effort of studying our own moral beliefs and our moral conduct and striving to ensure that we and the institutions we help to shape live up to standards that are reasonable and solidly based. To those in the business of insurance compelled to deal fairly and in good faith in all transactions, developing a moral code of conduct that strives to ensure that every person involved in the business of insurance will shape and live up to standards that are solidly based in the good faith handling of insurance transactions and insurance claims. There is no single answer to the question of what ethics is or how one can act ethically. There are, in fact, multiple concepts defining ethical behavior that began with the Code of Hammurabi that commenced more than three eons ago to continue to evolve through modern philosophers, preachers, and people who claim to be ethicists. Philosophers have struggled with the concepts of ethics for more than three eons. No one agrees on which to use. Some apply various concepts depending on the situation. Those in the business of insurance should avoid situational ethics which are ethics should not and will not apply in the insurance business, whose only ethical mandate should be the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. When dealing with insurance transactions, the ethical system adopted by the insurance professional and 
the person seeking to be an insured must be consistent. What was the Code of Hammurabi? Probably the first ever ethical code written down, and it was written on a four-ton slab of diorite, a durable but incredibly difficult stone for carving. At its top is a two-and-a-half-foot relief carving of a standing Hammurabi receiving the law, symbolized by a measuring rod and tape. The text compiled at the end of Hammurabi's reign is less a proclamation of principles than a collection of legal precedents set between prose celebrating Hammurabi's just and pot pious rule. Hammurabi's code provides some of the earliest example of the doctrine of lex talionis, or the laws of retribution, sometimes better known as an eye for an eye. Since Hammurabi issued his code, modern philosophers starting with Plato and Aristotle came up with the idea of virtue ethics. Then from the Hebrew Bible, the Ten Commandments set forth rules of ethical behavior. Later, Jesus came out with the golden rule that do unto others as you would have others do unto you. After Jesus, the Islamic Imams came up with a form of Islamic ethics, Buddhist ethics. Kant, a German philosopher, came up with what he called the categorical imperative, and also what he based as pure reason being a grounds for ethical behavior. A later German ethicist, Hegel, came up with his theory of the ethical life. And other philosophers created meta-ethics, a study of where ethical notions come from and what they mean. Applied ethics, the study of specific problems or issues. Altruism and Ayn Rand's rational self-interest, as well as the utilitarian principle. Whichever concept of ethics the insurance professional or the person seeking insurance follows, it is always best to apply the covenant of good faith and fair dealing when seeking insurance or when acting as an insurer or the representative of an insurer and act with great integrity, professional competence, and confidentiality. The insurance professional must refrain from disclosing outside the firm confidential information acquired as the result of his or her duties as an insurance professional. Similarly, the insured must act and keep confidential information provided to him or her by his insurer. Disclosure of a confidence obtained in the decision-making process or in the application for insurance or in the presentation of a claim requires absolute confidence and integrity. The insurance professional and the proposed insured must consider when confidences must be released the ethical insurer and the ethical insured must consider the potential of harm, whether all the relevant information is known and substantiated to the extent it is practicable, 
and Musk disclosed the confidence if failure to do so would breach the covenant of good faith and fair dealing. This video was adapted from my book, Ethics for the Insurance Professional, Second Edition, which is available as both a Kindle book and a paperback from Amazon.com. If you found the video of interest or useful, please refer it to your colleagues. It's free. And please also subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel, and my blog so that you can learn of future videos and future blog postings. Thank you for your attention.